Okay, now it's time to talk about calculating the correlational coefficient. And we're going to use the lesson, uh, the problem that was in the lesson. Okay, this is a big formula. If I showed you this formula on the first day of, of class, you'd probably freak out. But now, after doing standard deviations and doing some other calculations, you know what sum of x is, you know what sum of x squared is. That's all we're doing. Just a little bit more, and, and that's it. Formula's a little larger. Okay, so you can do this formula. Uh, you'll definitely have a question like this on the test. It takes a long time. It's easy to make mistakes. So I have all the calculations done up here to save time. I, I seriously uh, suggest that you are neat. You keep uh, scratch paper, and you uh, go in a neat fashion. So the way you'll get the problem on a test is you'll get these two values. You'll just get two columns, an x and a y value for a correlation, and I'll say what is the r value or what is the correlation coefficient. So you'll start with these two, an x value and a y value. And if you look at our formula up here, the Pearson product moment correlation, I mean it's a big chunky formula, but it's 150 years old, it's been working like a charm. N is the number of pairs, okay, number of pairs, we count them, we have eight, so you put eight in whenever there's an N. We have this thing called sum of x and y. This is new. We've never done this before, but it makes logical sense. You just take the x score multiplied by the y score. x score times the y score gives you this x y score. And then, of course, we're going to sum them up and put the sum of x y's in the formula. Then we have the sum of x and the sum of y. We've done that. Sum of x, sum of y. We have the n again. We have sum of x squared. We have to make an x squared column. So we take all the x's and square them, just like we did when we calculate standard deviation. And then we have a sum of x squared value. What's new here is we also do the same thing for y. We have sum of y squared. This is sum of x, of course. We already went over that. And here's sum of y squared. Sum of y squared, we just make the y squares 104 times 104. We add them up. We have a sum of y squared. And that's it. The last one is sum of y. We already went over that. It's right here. So. This is what I recommend. You make this table, you do this on your spreadsheet, you double check all your answers before you plug anything in. It's easy to make little mistakes here, okay? It's easy to say, you know, 10 times 10 is 1,000 instead of 100, okay? Those are easy, simple mistakes to make. So make sure these numbers, I would double check all these numbers before you start dumping them into the, pro into the problem. And this is what accountants do. When they count numbers, they'll count from the top down and then they'll count from the bottom up and see if they come up with the same number. That's a little trick for you. All right, once we have all the numbers, we just plug them in on the formula. And I highly recommend that you transpose the formula on your scratch paper. I've been teaching this class for a very long time, and the biggest problem students have is they're sloppy. They got the formula way over on this sheet, they start to work on half the problem on this sheet, and they miss something. They miss a square. They miss a negative. They make this addition instead of subtraction. They make this multiplication. Here's a hint. If you get a number on your calculator that doesn't fit, there's nothing wrong with the calculator. There's something wrong with one of your signs in here. Okay? So be slow, be neat, put this formula on, double check it a couple times, and slowly plug in the values from your table. That's what we did. Stepped right through here until we come all the way down to this 920, 9271 divided by the square root of this huge number. We take that square root and we end up with an R coefficient of negative 0.9244. That is how you solve for the correlation coefficient.